needing help with your potions, having trouble filling your hex quota, estranged from your cat? These are common issues that I have a cure for. Stick around as I show you how to witch in Pathfinder. A witch is an arcane spellcaster that gains her power through communion with the unknown. Witches can take on a number of different roles from blaster to buffer. Today we are going to go with an archetype I have played before, the Invoker. Invoker gives up three hexes, but Invoker allows you to spend a swift action and commune with your patron to receive a bonus that increases as you gain levels. We will mostly utilize Curiosity from the Invoker list for the DC increase to the hexes as well as the bonus to the spells from our patron list. A witch comes with a d6 hit die, so they're a bit squishy. They have a number of class skills, craft, fly, heal, intimidate, knowledge arcane, knowledge history, knowledge nature, knowledge planes, they have profession, spellcraft, useful, and use magic device. Use magic device, UMD, is when we want to have a character that can use scrolls and wands that they normally can't cast or have on their spell list to cover a wider area in the party. Unfortunately, we don't get a lot of skill points as we only have two, but since intelligence is our main ability score, it will be the highest and we will continue to pump it up each single level. Witches cannot use armor or shields and they can only use simple weapons, but you're not really going to be using those, especially not after the first level or two. Next, let's cover a witch's patron. When you first become a witch, you select a patron. The list here is the theme of the patron, the actual name or who it is to you, or if you even know something about it, is between you and your GM. You need to decide this when you create your character. The patron theme provides you with a list of spells. These spells are added to your spell list for free at level two and every two levels thereafter. Starting at level one, we get our Witches Familiar. Mm, I'm going to pick a Comp Signathus. My kids love dinosaurs. This will act as a way for us to commune with our patron. Whether you use it as your watcher or your teacher, your familiar also functions as your spellbook. That means that all your spells are kept inside your familiar, so don't lose it. And each day you must commune with her in order for you to be able to prepare spells. Got to commune for one hour, just like a wizard reading a spellbook. Your familiar at the start stores all cantrips on your spell list, zero level spells, and three first level spells of your choice. Speaking of spells, you start off level one with being able to memorize, use for the day, three cantrips of your choosing, and one level one spell slot. Bonus spells are given depending on your intelligence score modifier. Aside from your patron spells, each level a witch gets to add two spells that she is of the appropriate level to cast to her familiar. She can also add as many spells as she wants that's on her spell list as long as she gets them from scrolls or another familiar. I also rule that we can get them from wizard spell books, but I have a house rule that allows you to rip pages from your uh, spell book, uh, slowly destroying it. Um, now let's get to hexes. Hexes are magical tricks that can be used multiple times without losing them. Normally they take a standard action, they do not provoke an attack of opportunity. They have a spell DC 10 plus one half your witch's level plus your intelligence modifier. Hexes are supernatural abilities. So they are magical, but they are not spells. They are not subject to spell resistance. Their effect cannot be dispelled and it is not subject to counter spells. That makes up for the bulk of the witch as hexes and spells just grow with you as you level. Now, Let's conjure our character. First, let's go with the Tiefling this time. They have a bonus to dex for our AC and touch if we use it, so that's good. Um, we're going to have a plus two to the intelligence bonus. Charisma is negative, but that's not a big deal. They gain dark vision. They get some nice resistances, spell-like abilities, and a little skill bonus. I'm going to replace Fiendish Sorcery, since I'm not a sorcerer, with an alternate racial trait, Prehensile Tail. You're going to have to ask your GM about this. Most of the time, there's no issue with it, but we always allow our players to use alternate racial traits as long as it's applicable to their character. Stats. 
with our bonuses from being a tiefling, we're going to end up with nine strength. We will end up with a 18 in dexterity. Our constitution is going to be 13 for now. Our intelligence will be 18. We will increase it as we level. Wisdom is going to be 12. Charisma all the way down to a 5. Traits. We will take Pragmatic Activator so that we can use our intelligence score with UMD since we do not have a charisma. And let's also take Student of Philosophy. So once again, I can use my intelligence score, which is my main focus, instead of charisma on diplomacy and bluff checks. It was a hard pick between this or Cosmopolitan for linguistics, but I can always use a wand or a scroll to understand and read different languages as I level up if it's necessary, depending on what kind of campaign we're on. But if my fighter heavy group does not have charisma, no one is going to be able to use diplomacy or bluff. So this allows me to. For our familiar, since we're going to go with a compi, we're going to get a plus four to our initiative checks. It's a dinosaur. I recommend, especially early on, keeping him close in a pocket. You can get even a specialized item to hold him in. That way he is nice and safe until he gets a little more HP and you don't have to worry about him dying all the time. We're going to pick the theme of our patron, which will be time, as I want access to haste because once again, I was running a heavy melee party. Uh, some of the others are not bad. I can cover them at the end. Spells for first level. Let's go with Mage Armor, and I'm going to go with uh, Cure Light Wounds. While I won't be doing a lot of healing with this guy, you can make designated healers out of witches. It could help at low levels for my party. Or you could go with something like Snowball for damage. We also will get a little bit of extra slots due to our intelligence, so we'll be able to memorize more spells. Remember that each spell slot, since we are prepared, when we prepare a spell, we fill a slot that we have open with a spell, and it's the only spell that we're allowed to use for that slot until we have our 8-hour rest and we get to do it again the next day. For our first level feat, we're going to be taking extra hex because we want to get slumber. This should always be your first hex, in my opinion, unless there's a difference in your campaign, because it has a 30-foot range. Now, you can only try it once per opponent, but it is low-level GM Bane. At low levels, you're going to be putting together or putting to sleep all the goblins and everything else you meet, and so each round, you can just safely knock down and decrease the difficulty of your encounter. Once again, at level one, we're going to get the invoker ability, allowing us to give ourselves a buff one minute at a time, one minute per level of our character. This is going to increase the DC, sleep, slumber, I mean, of our hexes at level one, and then any of the spells from our patron, which is time, will also increase during that time as well. That's the reason we had to take the feat for our slumber hex as we initially lose it due to our archetype class. This will happen two more times, uh, once at 8th and once at 16th. Now you have everything you need. Go forth, slay some goblins, but in case you want to stick around, let's take this a little bit further. Level 2, we will get our free patron spell, Ventriloquism. We will grab Hex Vulnerability and Command for our spells. We will also get another Hex, yay. We're going to take Fortune. Level 3 spells, let's take Sea Invisibility and the ever-useful Glitter Dust. Four feats, we're going to grab an extra hex again. Let's grab Cackle. This way, we can buff our party members using Fortune that we grabbed last level. And if we keep them within 30 feet, each round for our move action, we get to extend Fortune on them. This allows us to buff them. Now, once we stop buffing them, they can no longer have this benefit for 24 hours, well, till the next day. But this is a great buff for any of your melee. Now at level four, we're gonna get a new hex. We're going to take flight. This is always useful. And next level, level five, we're going to have fly by the minute times our level that we can use on ourselves without having to use a spell slot. Uh, speaking of spells, we're going to take web and let's take aggressive thundercloud. Uh, we will also be getting silence for free this level from our patron. This level, we get our first ability score increase, or ASI. Let's raise our intelligence by another point, and let's go to the next level. Level 5, we get third level spells, so we will take Dispel Magic, and let's also take Fly. I know that last level we took Flight Hex, so now we can fly ourselves, but we want to be able to have 
our meat shields up in the air between us and the enemy or to be able to get to the enemy quickly. Normally they cannot do this themselves at this level, so we got to help them out. For our feet, we can either take ability focus if our GM lets you take it um, to get a better hex save. Now, you have to take this ability focus each hex that you want since each one is considered a different ability by raw. We could also take spell focus if you find yourself using specific schools or you know where you want to go with your magic. Me, for this guy, I'm going to take a cursed hex. A cursed hex lets you reuse a hex on an opponent who's saved and doesn't require more resources or extra actions like casting our first level spell that we got. Level six, level six, we get haste for free. Woot. Free zoomies, guys. We're going to also take the spell Heroism. It's going to be good for our party. And we're going to take Tongues for Utility. Um, for a hex, we need to have Misfortune. If anything can't sleep, Misfortune combined with our Cackle is just going to make it much less of a threat against the rest of our party. At 7th level, we get new spells. Confusion. Every GM's Bane. And you will love this spell. We're also going to take Death Ward. For our feet, I like to take Improved Familiar. This feat lets you pick a new familiar from the improved list to replace your old one. Don't worry, he has just evolved like that one game, you know. I like the Puka. The Puka is like a flying rabbit girl. She not only can fly, but she can use invisibility at will. She has a high stealth. She can be your scout. She can also use magic devices for buffing. And remember, she uses your ranks on top of her charisma for that... Um, ability. Uh, she can use your Wand of Cure Light Wounds on your downed fighter so you don't have to give up your action. Um, she can distract and annoy monsters. Also remember, since she is invisible, as long as she does not attack, she can technically cure light wounds on that hurt fighter and she's still going to remain invisible. She has fast healing, so if she ever gets into a jam, she can just run off with her real quick fly speed she's got and she's going to be back to full health in like a minute later. She has damage reduction, which is pretty good for her. Um, she has spell resistance, though it's not that great. They make great familiars. They have all the slots as a person if you want to get janky and give them magical items to use, miniature bags of holding, all that kind of stuff. I've even used her poison attack to take care of swarms before in a campaign I was in. Uh, I had run out of spell slots and so she was the most effective way for me to uh, combat swarms. At 8th level, you get threefold aspect for free. Uh, that's a 24-hour increase to your intelligence. You kind of age yourself, and it stacks with everything. Not bad if you're worried about your save DCs. Um, we also were going to take the spells Black Tentacles and Scrying. We lost a hex again, but now our increase from our invoker ability goes up by 2 for the DC increase. Our ASI increases our intelligence another point. Ninth level lets us grab some fifth level spells. So we're gonna take Break Enchantment and then we can also do Telepathic Bond or we can take Baleful Polymorph depending on the kind of campaign you're running. Maybe you need to keep in touch. You're doing some stealthy stuff, having to split the party. Uh, let's take Improved Initiative because we should always go first. At 10th level, our first greater hex is going to be Agony. Agony can shut down an opponent with not allowing them to take actions. They get to save each round, but we're going to be bumping our intelligence for our DCs. We get to have a bump for our DC from our invoker. It's going to make it harder and harder, hopefully, for them to make that save. Uh, spells we're going to get teleport for free. Yay. Uh, let's also take Overland Flight. In case we don't know where we're going, we can get the party there much faster. No long trips. And we're going to take Summon Monster 5. You also get Second Invocation from our Invoker archetype. Second Invocation allows you to put two facets of your patron. So instead of just taking Curiosity all the time, you can take that and something else like Bridge or Decisions. Level 11. Let's take Dispel Magic Greater. And we want Summon Monster 6. We're going to take the split hex for our feet. Split hex does what you think. It allows you to use a regular hex on another creature as long as they are within 30 feet from the first. 
Level 12, we get Disintegrate for free, so we can vaporize some guys. Let's also take True Seeing and Animate Object. True Seeing may take away all the glamour of the world, but Animate Objects is going to be nice for us too. If you're like me, you don't like to walk. I'd much rather have an animated throne walk me around instead of me having to use my own feet or some horse. We will also take a major hex, Retribution. This will let us debuff opponents so that they deal themselves half melee damage that they dish out. Though we shouldn't hope our fighters get hurt, it's nice when plans come together and we end up dealing some damage back to the bad guy. Another ASI, going to intelligence of course. Level 13, let's take the feat Witch Knife. It's going to help our patron spell DCs out again. Um, let's take two 7th level spells. We can pick Bestow Curse Greater and Summon Monster 7 for spells. The new summons are good and with the mass debuff we'll already have that higher DC. So hopefully we can get multiple opponents at one time. Level 14 we get the spell Expend. I have never found much of a use for it. It's pretty specific in my opinion. But we can take the spell Shadow Body which sounds pretty good. A nice way to get some survivability in case we need it. Um, you could even use it to help deliver touch spells if you use them a lot. We should probably take Greater Teleport. It's just going to up our ability to get around without or with less errors. We can take Icy Tomb for our Hex. Ah, level 15. At this level, we should probably use our feet to take something in the spell focus chain. It's going to help us very much in late game with our saves. Eighth level spells we could take, create Demiplane. But aside from the fact that it's cool, you may not have use for it just yet. There may be better ways for you to get your rest in. But it's so cool, and its bigger brothers are better anyway. So how about summon monster eight, and let's take Maze. Maze is so good, just don't throw it on the enemy's wizard. 16th level, we get Temporal Stasis. Not too bad, but we do have to touch someone. Though it could be used to save an ally, let's also take Irresistible Dance. I've got a pretty good story about a party using this spell to take down a 10,000 year old rune lord. And let's also take Mind Blank. Mind Blank is good if you have GMs like me that have high level casters that are trying to find and screw with the party. No hex again, but this is the last sacrifice we have to make for our invoker and our ability goes up to plus three now. Um, we're going to get the ASI to intelligence once again. Level 17. Okay, boys and girls. We get our first ninth level spells. Let's take Summon Monster 9, and let's either take Mass Suffocation, or let's take Dominate Monster. Find something evil, dominate it, and take it as your new pet. Throw that and our max level summon spells at a creature or an encounter, and just sit back, relax. For our feet, let's take Amplified Hex. Doing this will allow us to burn through some of our weaker level spells if we don't need the utility. And this way we can try and make our spells, whatever they are, stick. At 18th level, here we get our last patron spell, Time Stop. Oh. Use this and lots of pets for effect. It's great, but really getting a few extra rounds doesn't hurt no matter what you decide to do to it. Time Stop is an amazing spell. And since normally we don't get it, Time Patron is a great way to get access to that spell. Let's grab the Grand Hex Life Giver. Once a day, it lets you bring a party member back from the dead, and it does not cost a component. Let's also grab Maze of Madness and Suffering. That's a fun one. Because sometimes you just want to make things go away. And let's grab either Mass Suffocation, again, or Dominate Monster, whichever we didn't get before. Level 19 we can grab the feat Split Major Hex, finally. Pushing Agony or Ice Tomb on multiple opponents at one time is great. Uh, we also are going to be taking spells Create Demiplane, Greater. As our group needs a place to rest up in peace, let's also grab Heroic Invocation to give our party a little boost. Don't worry about the fatigue after. You can fix that with a little magic UMD, no problem. Now. Drum roll, please. Level 20. Level 20, we get access to a Grand Hex, Animal Servant. If you don't mind picking something like a gorilla or something, you could get nice servants, 
do the whole Beauty and the Beast thing. Um, and who doesn't like to be waited on hand and foot after struggling through all those levels? Fill your castle in another plane with animal servants. Grab you a few more spells. Enjoy life as a level 20 witch. But now, you should have a plane to call your own, an army of servants to take care of your every whim, and a patron on speed dial, basically. I know that witches don't have capstones. They're one of the few that do not. But with grand hexes and access to some of the pretty nice ninth level spells you get, it kind of makes up for it. Also, since we get an ASI for level 20 and we've got round numbers on most of the other things that we want, let's go ahead and throw that on Constitution because why not? Uh, we're going to round it off. It's going to help our concentration. It's going to give us an extra 20 HP at this level. You should probably also increase that with a belt along with your dexterity when it comes to items. Now, this has just been kind of my rundown of a character that I have made and played before the last time that I built a witch. You can and should change your feats and spells out for whatever fits you, the theme of your character, or the theme of your campaign. Uh, but this list does give you a view of what you're going to be getting into as a witch, and it's pretty good. You will also be spending all your ability score increases to get your intelligence, unless you need just that one point in dex for ranged touch, touch attacks, if that's what you decide to go with at the end, like we did with Constitution. But whenever I played, I was the caster of the group. I wanted to make sure that I could haste my melee friends. My wife was a paladin at that time. If you're not in the same situation that I was in, you might want to go with a different patron, either the Aurora patron or the Autumn patron. You get access to a few more damage oriented uh, spells. It will be good for all of your feats that we went through and with your invoker. I also did not go over med to magic feats as I ended up buffing a lot in my group, but some of the good ones are quicken, intensified in case you want to take advantage of increasing the damage for your snowball. Reach is also a great one. Also remember you can buy rods since we're level 20 now. You can buy rods that do this several times a day. And so if it's more situational and you're not using it all the time, you can go ahead and save those extra spell slots for the higher level buffs or debuffs that you're going to be using. Some items outside of your standard, um, some people don't think about it, is a mithril buckler. I know, I know, you can't use a shield, but if it's mithril, it will be light enough that you can wear it and it will not provide you any spell failure. You will not get a check penalty for it. And then you just enhance it with magic as you level like a normal class would or a normal uh, character would. Uh, you will want bracers of armor eventually probably. Um, there's some other types that you can do. Braces of armor go up to plus eight. You will not be able to wear armor normally because I think most of the time you're going to end up having a spell failure chance. There is some caster specific armors or robes that you can get that your GM might allow you to have access to. You're going to want a headband of intelligence. It should be the first and the fastest thing that you enhance as you level. Intelligence is our everything. We have turned it into um, our UMD and bluff skill. We use it for all of our hexes and spells. It's what you need highest at all times. There is a Cackling Hags Blouts that will help you, especially early on at levels. If you're wanting to get some extra use out of your hexes and you cannot give up your move action for that turn. There's Gloves of Storing. Um, it's going to allow you to store wands or rods or scrolls and then pop them out at an instance. Also, and I hate it, but Rod of Absorption, it comes in handy if your GM allows you to get hold of one of those. Target spells, it can just absorb them and allow you to use them, or the spell slots at a later point. A Rod of Abrupt Hexes, good for Quicken, three times a day. Go with Blur Wands, Mirror Image Wands. Any of the other spells that you want that you do not have on your list, that's why we focus on having a high UMD. We put points into it, we took the trait to it. Don't waste it. Get as much use out of it as you can. If you've got some spare money, don't even worry if you've got another caster in there. Just make sure that you can cast anything that you will want at a later date. Also remember your Puka, which is why I took it. It's stealthy. It's invisible. She has a UMD, so she can use those wands for you in a pinch. She can even cast something on you with a scroll or wand if you get unconscious or enthralled in some way. Well, that is our first video on succeeding as a class. Remember, there are many different types of witches and you can play any of them and follow any theme. They are fun thematic classes. Whether you build a grave walking body snatcher or a witch focused on hexes, 
Just remember, when you're walking in the woods and you see a little hut that wasn't there before, turn around, walk the other way. If you like this video, check out my others. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. If you have any tips or requests, drop them in the comments below. And until next time, may your crits be epic, your adventures legendary, and your gaming table filled with laughter. <laughs>